as we discussed in the earlier video on projectile motion, for a given initial velocity, the maximum range of an object is achieved using a launch angle of 45 degrees. As you can see in this graph, the maximum range occurs at an angle of 45 degrees. When the launch angle decreases to less than 45 degrees, the range will decrease from its maximum value. Likewise, if the launch angle increases from 45 degrees, the range also decreases from its maximum value. Now, why is this the case? We can understand the effect of launch angle on the range of an object in projectile motion by looking at the mathematical expressions of range. In the absence of air resistance, the range of an object is given by its initial horizontal component velocity, ux, multiplied by its time of flight. The time of flight can be also examined individually by using the equation of sy equals to uyt plus half gt squared, where sy and uy are the vertical components of displacement and initial velocity, respectively. To find the time of flight in this equation, we can use the vertical displacement of the object when it finishes its projectile motion. So for a given value of sy, we can see that the time of flight in this equation depends on the value of the initial vertical velocity. If the initial vertical velocity is bigger, this will give us a longer time of flight. If the initial vertical velocity is smaller, this will give us a shorter time of flight. Since the initial vertical velocity affects the time of flight, this also affects the range of the object because range is equal to ux multiplied by the time of flight. The initial vertical velocity, ui, affects the time of flight directly, which in turn affects the range of the object. Therefore, we can say that the range of the object depends on both the horizontal and the vertical components of an object's initial velocity. Suppose we have an object that undergoes a full flight projectile motion meaning it finishes the motion at the same vertical displacement as where it was launched. Thus, the value of sy at the end of the motion, we can say it is zero. Using the equation we discussed earlier, we can derive an equation for the time of flight. The value of sy at the end of the motion is zero, and the initial vertical component can be written as u times by sine theta, where u is the initial result in velocity, times by time plus half, g t squared. If we divide the time variable on both sides, we'll get zero equals to u sine theta plus half g t. So half g t equals to minus u sine theta, t equals to minus two u sine theta divided by g. And keep in mind that here, g is equal to minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The range of this object is given by its initial horizontal velocity, ux, multiplied by the time of flight, which is now given by minus 2u sine theta divided by g. Recall that the initial horizontal velocity can be also written as in terms of u, that is u cosine theta multiplied by minus 2u sine theta over g. This is where we need to return to some of our trigonometry knowledge from mathematics. One of the double angle formulas in trigonometry states that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta times by cosine theta. And you can see here we have that expression. We have cosine theta, sine theta, and 2. So we can combine this expression together to simplify our equation to become minus u squared sine 2 theta. Because cosine theta times by sine theta times by 2 is equal to sine 2 of the launch angle, and this is all divided by the value of g. This expression tells us that the range of the object depends on three variables, the initial velocity, the launch angle, and it is also inversely proportional to the gravitational acceleration, which is a g here. For given g value and initial velocity, if these two variables are constant, we can see that sine 2 theta will give you a maximum range when 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees because sine 90 gives you a maximum value of 1. If the maximum range occurs at sine 2 theta equals 90 degrees, we can easily say that theta will then become 45 degrees. This is a reason why the launch angle of 45 degrees will always give you the maximum range for given initial velocity and also gravitational acceleration.